Hello and welcome back to the AndroidAppTraining.com online course. Now in the course we've already created our first app which we called Hello Per, and that was a nice app to start with because it was pretty simple and it gives you a real basic understanding of how App Inventor works. Now what we're going to do is expand our Hello Per app into something completely different and we're going to call that Android Zoo. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new project here for starters and we'll call it Android Zoo. All right, we'll click OK, and we see we come to our components editor here. So the first thing you usually are going to want to do so you don't forget this is click on the screen one area here and just change the name of your app. Call it Android Zoo. Now we see that our title's changed here. Now what we're doing in Android Zoo is we're going to take the same functionality that we learned in our Hello Per app, and we're going to expand that. So before we had a picture of a kitty, and when it was clicked on, you would hear a meow sound. Now for Android Zoo, we're going to take an image of a cat, of a lion, and a tiger, and we're going to label those, and we're going to attach some sounds to each one of them. So essentially it'll function just like our Hello Per app, but the real reason I want you to do this app is to start learning how to graphically lay out your app so that they look nice and clean. And to do that, I'm actually going to show you how to use something in the screen arrangement drawer here. So we'll click on that and we're going to use the one called table arrangement. Now we'll drag the table arrangement in here and you'll see that in the properties section we have two columns and two rows. So you can think of this table arrangement just like an Excel spreadsheet where you have your columns going up and down and your rows going left to right. Now we're going to put in three images in one row all the way across. So we're going to need three columns and we're going to need two rows because we're going to have our images up top here and we're going to have our labels down below. So what I want to do is change our columns to three and our rows we can leave at two. Now when you're using a table arrangement 99 times out of 100 you're going to want to set the width to fill parent. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll see that our table arrangement now goes all the way across the screen. Now to get started adding the components to our app, we're going to go back to the basic palette and just like we did in Hello Per, we want to use a button and we'll place that in here and I'll actually show you how the table arrangement looks. You can actually put this in any one of the cells. We'll put it in the top left corner here and the reason we're using a button is because we want that button to be able to perform an action for us which is bring up the sound effect when the button's clicked on. So we've got our button, we'll use that for our kitty image, and we'll drag another button in here for our lion, and one more for our tiger. Now remember when you start adding more components to your viewer, you're going to want to start changing the names of these components so that when you get to the blocks editor, you know which blocks to use when you're looking to add some functionality to each button. So I'm going to go down here and rename button one, and we'll call that kitty button. Now I'll rename button 2 and 3 and we'll be back right after that. Alright, so we've got our buttons named, our kitty button, lion button, and tiger button. Now let's go ahead and start adding images to these buttons. Let's go to button 1 and we'll go to the image section in the properties area. And we'll click on that box. We'll click add so that we can go search for some media on our computer. Choose file. And let's go find our kitty. And I should let you know right here that I'm using this image called Kitty90, which you can download directly from the online course. And what that's telling me is that I set this image to be 90 pixels wide and 90 pixels high. The reason I'm doing that is because when you start adding images in a row across the screen, you're going to want your images to be of a certain size to actually fit inside the screen so that your images are not spilling off of the screen to the right side. So we'll go ahead and click Kitty, and we'll click OK. So we've got our image of a kitty right here, and we want to delete this text for button one. So while our kitty is still highlighted, you go over to the text area and just simply delete that. And now we'll add our next image, which is going to be of a lion. And we'll delete the text for the lion. And we'll go to our third button, which is going to be the image of a tiger. Click 
click OK and we'll delete the text for the tiger button. In our next video I'll show you how to add the labels to your Android Zoo and then we'll talk about adding the sound effect functionality. Then we'll move on to showing you how the blocks work and how to add the correct blocks to make your app work. And then lastly we're going to go back and make some changes to our app so that you can see how you can change the graphic layout of your app to make it look nice.